Now we are going to focus on the graphing portion of logarithmic functions. Before I just show you what the graph of a log function looks like, let's talk about where it came from. Remember that logs are defined as inverses of exponential functions. So let's first review what the graph of an exponential function looks like. Looks like this here. Now this one is an example of when our base is greater than one. Remember when our base is a fraction or a decimal between zero and one, then the exponential function's graphed a little bit different, and I'll talk about that one here in a second. So this is what our typical graph of an exponential function looks like. Remember if we wanted to graph an inverse, that inverse function is the function of it flipped over the line, y equals x, which I've drawn here. So if you can imagine flipping this blue function over that black dotted line here, you're going to get the graph of a log function. And so this is what your logarithmic function looks like when you have your base greater than 1. Now we want to talk about the properties of this. We can recall the properties of exponential functions. So let's look at the blue graph first. We define the domain multiple times. We know it's from negative infinity to infinity. We know the range is from 0 and above, because that's where my blue function is defined. We know that it has a horizontal asymptote right here at y equals 0. And we know it had a y-intercept right here at the value 1, because if I plug in 0 as an exponent, I'm going to get out the number 1. Now we want to talk about what happens if we invert those properties, meaning what happens if we look at this red log graph here. So let's start with the domain. Domain is defined as all of the x values. If we look at all of the x values for this red graph here, notice it looks like it's going to go right forever. So that's going to be my ending domain. But notice it looks like it never goes left beyond this y-axis here. So that means my domain starts as 0. So my range here actually got inverted into my domain there. OK, what about my range of this red graph then? Notice it goes down forever. And if I go far out enough here, I will see that it goes up forever. So my range is from negative infinity to infinity. So my domain and my range from my exponential to my log function get inverted. Well, that's the way inverses are defined. We switch x and y. So my x values in my domain here are going to become my y values of my range there. My y values of my range here are going to become my x values of my domain there. So we can see how the inverse affects my domain and range. Let's see how the inverse affects the other ones. Horizontal asymptote, well, if we look back to my blue exponential function, we had a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. But if I flip that over my y equals x line, it's going to become a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So I no longer have a horizontal asymptote, but I have a vertical asymptote when x is equal to 0. So it switches from my x-axis to my y-axis. My y-intercept, which was here, now gets flipped to here. So it's no longer a y-intercept, it's now an x-intercept. And notice the coordinates. The coordinates are flipped. Again, that's how inverse functions are defined, by interchanging the x and the y variables. So this gives us the properties of all log functions. OK, now this was an example of when our base was greater than 1. Let's see what happens when our base is less than 1. So I'm going to pull up my Desmos app here. And so you can see that I have an exponential function. This one is just 1 half x, but this would work if I had any fraction between 0 and 1 in here. I'm going to get the graph of my inverse function by flipping it over the line, y equal x. And so if you can imagine what this looks like, it's not going to be as easy to see as the last one, because the last one 
was all above my line up here, which got flipped to all above my line down there. So that one was a very easy flip to see. This one's not going to be as visual because notice I have some of it above here and some of it below there. Well, those two things are going to get flipped. And so it's going to look like this. So what happens then is everything that was above here gets reflected to this one there. And everything that was below my line there gets reflected to this right here. So it's really kind of confusing to see them on the same graph because it's hard to tell what's what. But the different colors definitely help. The blue is my exponential and the red is my logarithmic. And so if we wanted to talk about domain and range and intercepts and asymptotes, it should be the same thing as the last time. If I'm looking specifically at my red graph, my domain is zero to infinity. My range is negative infinity to infinity. So that's all my Y value. I have a vertical asymptote at X is equal to zero because that's happening here on my y-axis, and I have an x-intercept, and we see it's the same place, it is at 1, 0. And so we can see how things are inverted from our exponential functions into our logarithmic functions. If you think about the definition of inverse, just switching the x and y coordinates, everything here switching from there all makes sense. So let's try and graph one of these log functions all on our own. And so I have the function here, y equals log base 2 of x. Remember, the easiest way to interpret a log function is to convert it into an exponential function. So what is this converted into an exponential function? It is the same thing as 2 to the y is equal to my x value. So that's my exponential function that I'm going to put here. Okay, so normally I pick values for x, and that's going to give me what my y-coordinate is. In this place, it's actually going to be easier to pick values for y and then figure out what your x-coordinate is. So let's start with y equals 0. If I have 2 to the 0 power, then that's going to be 1. So that gives me the ordered pair 1, 0. That's going to work the same thing if I were to plug it into my log function. If I picked 1 into my log function, I know log base anything of 1 is equal to 0. So it gives me the same ordered pair, 1, 0. Okay, let me pick a different value for y. So let me pick 1 for y. Well, 2 to the first power is equal to 2. This also is very easy to figure out in the log function because if I were to put 2 into my log function, my bases 2 and 2 would cancel out, and so that would give me the exponent of 1. And maybe that's another thing that we should be utilizing here. We have the property that log base b of b to an x exponent is equivalent to x. So maybe here I should be picking some exponents of 2. So if I picked 4, that would give me log base 2 of 4 or log base 2 of 2 squared. So these two would cancel out, and that would give me 2. So if I plug 4 into my log function, that gives me 2. How about if I picked 8? That would give me log base 2 of 2 cubed. My bases cancel out, and that gives me 3. So if I were to plug in 8 into my function, that would give me out the value of 3. And if it's easier to think about it this way, that's perfectly fine. I encourage you to get somewhat familiar with the properties of logs, though. Okay, so far I've been doing positive numbers. What if I picked negative numbers? So let me go back over here. What if I picked negative 1 into this? That'd give me 2 to the negative first power, which is 1 over 2. Well, if I plugged in 1 half here, that would give me log base 2 of 1 half. Or I could do log base 2 of 2 to the negative 1 exponent. And that gives me negative 1. 
same thing if I picked one fourth log base two of one fourth I could think about that log base two of two to the negative two power and so that gives me out negative two okay hopefully this is enough ordered pairs to get what my log function looks like since I already know the basic shape of it I have the intercept at one zero I have two one four two eight three, one half, negative one, one fourth, negative two. And now we know that the graph of this one specifically looks like this here. And of course, our domain is zero to infinity. Our range is all y values. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. And we have an intercept at 1, 0. Same properties as before. All right, I'm going to stop this video here in the next video. And we're going to practice, and we're going to practice graphing logarithms more and more.